text is going to come from Romans 10, uh, 8 through 13. But in order to know where you're going, you got to know where you come from. Amen. And so on, on last Sunday, I preached, check your resume. And, and, and so I, before I begin this sermon, I need to ask a question. Are there any perfect people out there? I take by that silence, there are no perfect people out there. So uh, I need to under, we need to understand that this is a message that should be a blessing to all of us that's listening. In order to uh, do justice to Romans 10, 8 through 13, we need to do some road work first. And we're going to start with Romans 3 and 23 that says, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We understand that, hey, we there are no perfect people out there and we're not perfect. We, we're sinners saved by grace. And we just thank God that he gave us the opportunity to come back to him. So we we, we, we understand that even at our best, we're, we, we, we're nothing but filthy rags. We're sinners saved by the grace of God. But then in 20, verse 24, it says, but being justified freely by his grace. And that's that word for grace. You know, my uh, acronym for grace is God's redemption at Christ's expense. It didn't cost us anything, but it cost Christ his life. So, But being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ, not in us, but the redemption in Christ, whom God had sent for to be a propitiation through faith, in his blood. If we trust God and, 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 and follow Jesus for who he is and, and, and look at the example that he gave to us, then and our faith in his blood justifies us in order to move toward righteousness. It says, for to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. In other words, when, when, when Jesus came and lived that life and he gave his life for us, he paid a ransom for us. He gave us an opportunity to get back to God. And then let's move on down as we go to Romans 5, 5 and 1. That says, therefore, being justified by faith. So you have to be justified by faith because we, we have to trust God. We have to believe in God and know that he is who he is. He came and he did what he did in order to have. He said, we justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access, because without him, we have no access back to God. But because of him, we have access back to God by the faith in his grace, wherewith we stand and we can rejoice in hope in the glory of God. Um, when we look at this life that we live and and we have to understand that we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for Christ because we were bought and paid for through his blood and his suffering. And so now we belong to him and we ought to be willing, uh, and not just forth, but we ought to be willing to give our life to someone who's given their life for us. Then let's move down to Romans 5 and, and 9 that says, but much more then, being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We saved through the grace of almighty God. You know, all of the things that we got, all the junk that we got in our trunk, all the wrongs that we've done, we saved by the grace of God. Thank God that he cared so much about me that he was willing to come down and give his life for me that I might have a right back to God because God can't have any part of sin. So therefore the sin list had to die for the sin fall in order to bring us back into the, the covenant with God. As we move down a little further and we go to Romans 5 and, and 17 it says for, for if by one man death was reigned. We know death came to us because we were created to be uh, fellowship with God forever. 
But Adam in the garden uh, sinned, and because of Adam's sin, because of one man's sin, one man's offense, death was a sentence that was put over all of us. And much more, they which receive the abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ came, he put away, he did away with death. He gave us a life through him. Therefore, as by the offense of one, which was Adam, by the offense of Adam, judgment came upon all men. We were all condemned to die. In, in, in this body, in, in, in condemnation, even so by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which was a free gift. A free gift didn't cost us anything, but it cost Jesus his life. A free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. In other words, we have a right to the life because of Christ. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So he, so by the obedience of one man, all of us became righteous. If we move down a little further in there, in Romans 5 and 20, it says that as sin has reigned unto death, even so my grace, that word grace again, reigned through righteousness, through eternal life by Jesus Christ. And that's why when we, we're knowing that, that we're in Christ. We know that when we're in Christ, we don't worry about this life. You know, we're just passing through here. This is not our home. He has prepared a home for us. And because he prepared that home for us, but we had to be prepared in order to receive that home. And so we thank God because he transferred us from sinners to made us righteous in order to be in the sight of God so that God can bless us with that, that home over the mountain that home that he has prepared for, the home with the many mansions. We have to be able to stand on God's word and know who God is in order to receive that blessing. So then we said, what shall we say then? Because we know that Jesus has saved us and, and, and everything is all right. And he, he's uh, uh, brought us back into the fellowship with God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Because he saved us, we just continue to sin. Because, you know, God has saved me. God forbid. You know, we understand how how, how can someone that's, that's dead to sin, we, you know, and we no longer live there, how, how can we even think about going back into sin, knowing that that what what lies before us? Sometimes I wonder if we really believe or if we really think about what God is saying, you know, that heaven is a place for uh, prepared people. Yeah, and heaven is a man. He tells us about, they describe heaven in all of its glory and everything, everlasting peace, everlasting life, no more pain, no more heartaches, no more sorrow, all of those things. So why would we want to give up that life and go back into a life that we know that's doomed to eternal death? He said, know you not that so many of us were, that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptizing in his death. We were baptizing in Jesus Christ. We were baptizing in his death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead, we were also baptized into eternal life. That we should be able to walk in the newness of life. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. I, I don't have to do what I used to do. I don't have to be what I used to be. I can live a life pleasing unto Christ. That's why some, you know, you, you can look back and see some people stand before the church and open up and say, hey, I used to be this. I did this. But because of Christ, I was able to turn my life around. Thank God, God. Thank God that he allows you to turn so that we can get back on the right road and find our way back to him. Move down a little further to the sixth verse and 26th chapter and 22nd verse. It says, but now being made free, you're made free from sin and become servants of God, you have your fruit of holiness. And the end of that 
fruit is everlasting life. If, if, if we just hold on to what God has given us, you're free from sin. He created us and given you a new life in Christ. Not a life just for one day, but everlasting life created in Christ Jesus. He said, for the wages of sin is death. We know that. Wages of sin are death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. As we move closer to our text, we go to Romans 8 and 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. All of that stuff that we used to be, don't worry about it. He said, though your sins be scarlet, I can wash you white as snow. He doesn't worry about what you used to be. He's worried about who you are now. You know, it says, uh, uh, who walk not after the flesh. You know, we follow Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but, but he walked after the spirit. Because he knew then that the spirit of God was going to uh, uh, guide us sometime when we don't even know what to pray for. Spirit speaks for us. Moving down further in that chapter, in the 24th verse, it says, for we are saved by, by hope. Hope. Another one of my acronyms, he'll open past every time. But hope that is seen is not hope. If I know this is that and I see it, it's not hope. But what a man see it, why, why does he hope for it? Because he already has it. I don't have to hope for it. But if we hope for that which we see not, then I wonder sometimes, do we have a patience? But see, sometimes we pray and, and we, have, we pray with, with expectation. We pray with hope. But sometimes our patience get a little thin. Lord, uh, I, I, I prayed I pray yesterday and and Lord, you haven't moved yet. Lord, I prayed a, a couple of days ago, but we don't think about all of the times that God has come in and blessed us in, in the things that we've gone through. You know, we, if we were to look back at some of the prayers that we have prayed to God and, and asked for, and they've already come into fruition, and, and we never had the opportunity, we never even went back and said, thank you, God. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for bringing me here. Thank you for doing this. We just assumed that everything was all right, and we just went on about our way. But if we hope for that which we see not, do we do it with patience? Do we wait for it? As a song I say, you know, we got to pray. You know, C.C. Winer said you got to believe for it. You pray and you believe for it. Trust God who he is. You know, you know, old song, I will trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord, not just for, for, for yesterday or today, but uh, uh, until I die. You have to trust in him. See, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Well, we know not what to pray for sometimes. We, we, we Sometimes you, you're so sick, all you can do is just lay there. Thank God that God has sent us the Holy Spirit that, that prays for us when we don't even know the words to say. We don't know what to utter, but it moves in our spirit and make it intercession for us with groanings which, which cannot be uttered. Then we move down to our text today. It says that. But what say it? The word is near thee. We know what the word is. We hear it every day. We see it. We live it. Every Sunday we gather together and we ought to be reading our Bibles to find out what the word and what's, what's the word for the day. Some of them have daily uh, uh, readings that, that we go in and give us something. It, it's even in our mouth and in our hearts. That is the word of faith which we preach. You see, you have to stand on God's word. Faith is another one of my acronyms. Forsaken all, I take him. Uh, and another acronym for that same faith is that we can forward all issues toward heaven. When I, when I pray and I forward all my issues toward heaven, then I'm not worried about a thing. 
because I know that everything is going to be all right. But then it goes on. It says that, that if you confess with your mouth, you know, see, we have to confess God ourselves. Grandmother can't do it for you. Mother can't do it for you. Dad can't do it for you. Brother, sister, you have to confess God for yourself. Confess God, uh, who he is and know he is, and believe in thine heart. Well, I believe I know who God is. I don't want you to just know of God. I want you to know who he is. You know, the old saying, I can't see the Lord, but, but I can feel him. And believe in my heart that God had raised him from the dead. If you believe that, all the stuff that we will read, all the messages, all the songs, this one verse can lead you to salvation. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Lord, I know who you are. I believe who you are. I believe that you came and you walked this earth. I believe in a heart that, that you suffered, died on the cross. And, and I believe that you came down from that cross and went into a borrowed grave because you knew that God was going to raise you. And God raised him from the dead. He said, if you believe that, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart, man believe it. So you can say anything with the mouth. God knows your heart. The heart, you believe it unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You know, sometimes we have to just unload some of that stuff and talk about what we've done. Lord, forgive me. But Lord, I, I, I ask that you would come into my life and take these things away. Confession is made with the mouth. For the scriptures say it, whosoever believe it on him shall not be ashamed. The scriptures say that God said, if you're ashamed of me, you know, here on earth, I'm, you know, I'm I'm not going to even be, I'm not going to bring you before. I'm going to be ashamed of you before my father. You know, we are, you know, so, so many people, oh, oh, he's going, that's church boys. All they want to talk about is church. Yes, I do. Because I, I, I know who I am and I know whose I am. And if you knew that too, you will want to say the same thing. But there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. You know, sometimes, you know, the Jews were, were, were appointed people, and, but God gave us access to him through Jesus Christ. For the same Lord is over all. Same God is over the rich. Same God is over the poor. As sun rises in the east, it rises on the just. It rises on the unjust. But you have to understand that you have to call on God for yourself. And so when you call on him, he's there for you. You know, you don't have to be a, a, a delay leader. You don't have to be the, the, the choir director. You don't have to be the pastor. You don't have to be an usher. You just have to be yourself willing to call on God for who you are. And when you walk in the light, as Jesus is in the light, he gives us this found verse, and it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now you have a Roman's road to salvation. If you follow that road, you'll make it into salvation. And we say it all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let all of the saints say, Amen.